Well, good morning or good afternoon to everyone, depending on what part of the country you're calling in from. My name is Ginger Bell, and I'd like to welcome you to the Finance of America Mortgage Renovation Lending Made Simple. And today we are going to talk about the unique financing programs available for renovation loans through Finance of America. For some of you, this may be your first time on a Zoom webinar, and so I want to go through some of the housekeeping areas that can help you. Um, first of all, we do have um, several of you on this webinar. It's a very popular webinar. We're excited about that. And so because of that, we do have you muted so we don't have the background sounds that are coming in. So there's two different ways you can listen to the webinar. You can either listen through your computer by clicking on your audio and speakers, or you can call in uh, to the telephone number and listen on your phone phone as well. So if you're having any difficulties with that, um, just shoot me a text or a chat and let me know. Um, but otherwise, if you're seeing this, those are the two options that you have for audio. If you're hearing me, hey, you've already figured it out. So that's a good thing. Uh, second of all, we do have a handout for our webinar today, and I'm going to actually post that in the chat box. I'll be posting that a couple times throughout the webinar. Click on the link and you can get the handout, and that will go through some of the details that we are going to be covering. Second of all, I want to do a quick sound check and make sure that you all can hear me. So if you can just type in uh, to the Q&A panel or the chat panel um, that you can hear me, let me know what part of the country you're calling in from. I am actually in the Pacific Northwest today, but have had um, some travels throughout the country over the last week, been in Vegas, been in Denver, and uh, happy to be home in um, Portland, Oregon. So I can see you can hear me. So that's where you're going to ask questions today. We do have a lot of information that we're covering. If you do have questions, please type them in the panel. If you have specific scenarios, we're going to hold those off until the very end and see if we have time. But if you have anything that relates to the information that we're handing, handling at the time, then I'll, I'll make sure and um, grab that question as well. So uh, we have created a renovation guide. As I said, we're putting that here into your chat box. You can pick it up there. I'm also going to be emailing everyone a link tomorrow. It'll come through the registration um, email that you set up on this webinar. And then I'm also recording this webinar. So you'll be able to go back and listen to it or say somebody in your office that didn't get an opportunity to listen to it, you can go back and listen to the webinar. So with that, I'd like to introduce you to um, our presenters today. My name is Ginger Bell. I'm an education specialist in the mortgage industry, and I have the pleasure of working with William Brown, who's the National Renovation Sales Manager for Finance of America. So welcome, William. Glad to Thank have you. you on the call on this lovely Wednesday. Here. I think it's going to be two weeks from, day. We'll, from today. We'll be uh, suffering the aftermath of Christmas. So uh, happy <laughs> Boxing Day, I think is what it's called, It is right? Boxing Day. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's my day to actually just sit down and relax day. So, But looking forward to the holidays and wishing all of you the very best for that as well. So we have a very um, aggressive agenda here that we're going to be covering today. And we'll begin with sharing with you what is a renovation loan. We're going to talk about some of the loan details. We're going to talk about what uh, repairs are allowed, which is obviously very important to y'all being a realtor to be able to look at those homes and say, hey, these are the kind of repairs you can do. We're going to briefly talk about what happens after closing, although it doesn't necessarily affect you. I think it's important for you to know for your buyers and sellers how the process works. And then we'll talk about the benefits to not only the consumer, but also to you, the realtor, and why choose Finance of America. So let's begin, William, and we'll talk about, hey, what is a renovation loan? Okay then, so the first thing that you need to know is it's not, it, it's, while it acts like a construction loan, it's not a construction loan. It's a fully amortized, single closed transaction. It lets homeowners, home buyers, transform the home they purchase into the home they want. You can use it for a purchase or a refinance, and it's gonna be all the costs of the, the purchase or the payoff plus all the costs of the renovation. And then basically it lets the borrower leverage the after improved value to be able to renovate, renew, or reconstruct a home. Right. So how does it actually work then? Okay. So the borrower, you're going to, for the realtors on the call, you're going to write your purchase agreement like a regular purchase agreement. You're going to negotiate as hard as you can to get the best sales price for the borrower. And then the borrower through their mortgage advisor, some of you are on the call as well, thank you, are, is going to qualify the borrower for an additional sum of money above the purchase price but it's one loan, okay? So your seller concessions are gonna be based on the purchase price, 
but the down payment that the borrower makes is going to be based on the total acquisition. And then we hold the funds and disperse them for the repairs. We've got a couple different scenarios. We'll go into more detail on that. But on a limited 203K, which is one of the more common of the renovation loans, almost every purchase needs ten dollars or $15,000 to fix the house. That's a limited 203K. Usually five to seven days from funding, we will automatically send 50% of the contractor's bid amount to the borrower as a two-party check who can then sign it and hand it to the borrower. And then on Fannie Mae, on the standard FHA, 203K, and on the home style, we can disperse up to 50% of the funds, but that has to be a draw request. Now, it still takes about five to seven days after funding to get the money. Okay, so five to seven days to get actually stay, to, to get paid. They can still get started, but it's a matter they of getting get started, paid. Right. right. So let's talk about some of the basics. So remember, it's single close and it's fully amortized. That means their mortgage payment begins like a regular mortgage the first day of the month following when they close. Okay. But what's critical and what's different is that the loan amount is based on the after improved value, which is why they almost all work. Of 7,000 that we've seen in my op centers, it's like single digits that haven't appraised. They work based on the after improved value. The key for you guys and the sellers and any work that's done is completed after the closing using a buyer selected contractor, which is really important that the buyer go into the market, find their own contractor that they vet internally and then they establish a relationship with to do the repairs. Okay, but key, the seller doesn't make any repairs. Remember that, seller makes no repairs. The borrower is financing all the repairs and improvements that they wanna have done to the house. And then like I said, we pay the contractor, it's always a two-party check, after inspections and title updates, which is about a five to seven day turn time. Right, so, you know, um, William, we were just at the National Association Mortgage Professionals Conference, mm -hmm. and one of the things that I talked about in my session is being able to use products like the um, renovation loans to be able to build stories about um, what buyers and sellers are experiencing um, and, and to create that for social media. And so you have some awesome photos that are actually from renovation loans that you all have received in there, some of the before and afters. So. Um, tell us about this particular project. This is a Midwestern, like it's a ranch built in like a little kind of a hill. And you can see um, the, the, the key things. I just, so just from, fix this in your brain, okay? This is kind of old 60s, 70s style architecture with the screened in porch, um, you know, the basement, the red brick house. And if you go to the next one, you can see what they did, which really transformed the house. Look huge at that. difference. Yeah, huge, huge, huge added difference. Living, added living space. That whole porch is now, you know, a bonus room. I think they actually use it for part of the dining room. If you go inside, we don't have inside pictures, but if you were inside, you could see where the kitchen is. They did a cute, beautiful job, changed the entryway, the walk up, added the landscaping. It just like makes the house give it so much more appeal and it just pops. Right. right. And I love this because, um, and you know, William, I always put my marketing hat on as far as, okay, how can you use this not only to be able to, you know, sell a home, um, but also to build marketing into some of the things you're doing. So if you are doing renovation loans, I highly encourage you to take these kind of before and after pictures, sit down, interview the buyers, interview them as far as, you know, what they're looking for, how this has changed their lives and create a story about it, which is very impactful. So let's talk about some of the details and features of the renovation loan. And I know the purchase contract is very important in how it's worded, right? Right. And it's really on the FHA 203K that this is like, this is, this is an absolute requirement. Okay. So whatever you hear from other lenders, guys that are out there, realtors, this is what HUD requires to insure the loan. You got to get these three lines in there as an addendum someplace. Um, and it really just is a requirement that HUD came down really hard on based on an analysis of their customer complaints prior to the release of the new guidelines two years ago, right? So that that's the only difference. You gotta get that language in there. You can have this slide, um, put it on a card, carry it with you, make sure that the seller's okay with it. And then if it's a HUD REO property, make sure that the HUD contract is filled out correctly. There's a block on line four that has to be checked, and there's another block that says it's a 203K. Other right. than that, that's the only purchase requirement differences. So nothing different there, you know, everything as far as the process is the same. Just remembering um, to put that in the purchase contract and then also allowing for time. And this is one of those things, William, I know for a lot of realtors, it's like, oh my gosh, it takes so much longer. Um, it takes a little bit longer. Yes, it does because you are involving some upfront getting the, you know, what do they want to fix and what do they want to have done? But at the end of the day, if you can sell more loans, uh, or sell more homes than, you know, having those extra, you know, 15 days on at the end is well worth it, right? 
I think so. And it, it puts the borrower in so much a better place. You know, we looked at a house study earlier, late, earlier, I guess last month, they interviewed 10,000 more than 10,600 people and they had all spent at least $10,000 fixing up their house. And most of it they put on their credit cards. Right. And that's really um, what a lot of people are saying. And a lot of times, you know, maybe you have a particular home and they want to, you know, fix up the kitchen a little bit or do a new bathroom. And I am like an HDTV junkie. It's like, that's what I watch every night. I absolutely love those shows. And so, you know, you think about kind of tying this into what you're doing for selling your homes and, and saying, you know what, instead of putting that on a credit card, a Home Depot credit card or whatever they get, why not wrap it into your loan? And that way you can get more done. You can fix up the kitchen. You can fix up the bathroom and you can finish that basement. And it just positions you as a, a leveraged expert to be able to say, you know what, I know that the options are available out there. Let's talk to uh, a loan originator who can help you through that process. So let's talk about property types because I think a lot of people think this is only for single family homes, but there's really a lot of options available, right? There's a lot of options. So we will do condos. Both programs do condos as long as for an FHA loan it's approved or it's warrantable by Fannie Mae. It's always going to be walls in. Um, some associations tag the borrower with the doors and the windows, but most of them do not. So it's going to be interior changes and finishes. We do townhouses. You can do two to four units. I'm, I've seen a lot of duplexes this year, which is refreshing. Yeah. We're renting the second half to cover their mortgage. It's a really sweet deal if you're in a place where there's duplexes. Um, I've seen some fourplexes out on the West Coast, on the East Coast. You can do second homes if it's you're doing a Fannie Mae home style. So for your beach house or your lake house, you can re renovate that. Um, we can do investment properties, Fannie Mae home styles, single family resident investment properties. How about That's that? That's huge. That's, That's huge. Okay. And then it, they work on foreclosures and short sales. I try not to crawl under my desk when someone brings a short sale into the op center. <laughs> <laughs> but we do get them done. <laughs> Right. So it's still a possibility and there's fewer of those out there, but I think the investment home is really big. And I think what you talked about the duplexes, I know, you know, the millennial market, obviously that's our biggest expanding market for first time home buyers. And so millennials, they look at purchasing a home as an investment. I mean, right. truly that's the conversation you have to have. That's all the conversation I've had with all the focus groups I've done with millennials. Yep. Yep. And so being able to talk to them about, you know, some of those duplexes, fourplexes and saying, you know, you can go in and fix it up and get exactly what you want and be able to have income producing out of the other side. So, um, you can also convert it, convert yeah. it to, Oh, okay. You're so buying a big giant that. house, right? You're buying this giant two story house and you don't need the second story and it's zoned for multi-unit. You can finance turning it into a duplex from the get go and you can live upstairs and have your renters downstairs. Excellent. Sweet. So, and again, this is all about conversations that you all can have being a realtor, depending on the properties. If you're taking, you know, bar, buyers out to look at properties, if you have, are looking for a listing and you want to pick up a listing, what better way to pick up a listing to come in as an expert and say, you know what, some of the things we can do is really showcase this house to fix up some of those things. So instead of having those conversations with sellers saying, hey, you better fix this ugly kitchen up. Now you can say, you know what, not a problem. You can get exactly what you want. And again, we have another before and after picture. I know um, living where you do, William, you have a lot of basements. In Oregon, we don't have a lot of basements. Um, but this particular home is just that. It's a basement that is not utilized. And being able to expand that living space into this is phenomenal. Yeah. So just remember when, you do, when you're doing below grade, you may not get, you'll get some value for this because it increases the livability of the house. But you won't get the full value as, as if you convert an attic into a bedroom or something. But if you can tell the difference, it does make the house more appealing and provides more livability for, you know, either the people that are buying it or if it was a refi and they're going to eventually sell it for the people that are, you know, that are selling it. Yeah. So in lost spaces, you know, things like that, if you have a separate entry, this may be an option to be able to actually use it as an income um, producer. So some of the, the great options that are available. So think about the properties that you have or that you're looking at as possibilities in some of these. So let's look at uh, some of the available renovation programs and we're going to begin with the FHA rental loans. Yeah, this is kind of the classic first on the block. FHA HUD decided that they had to be helping homeowners buy their homes and renovating existing structures is, is both very green and very necessary in a lot of markets where there's not new construction. So we have a limited variety, which is capped out at 35,000 all in. So really, guys, that's going to be about twenty nine to $30,000 in material and labor costs. 
because we finance inspections and title updates and other things that HUD requires. Um, there's nothing structural you can do on that. So that's all cosmetic. And it doesn't matter how small it is. HUD is really a stickler on what's a structural repair. This is sweet for the contractor. They get paid twice. We can have up to three. And each one gets 50-50. And so they get money to start. And they get money when they're done. We pay them as they're finished. We don't make them all wait until all three are finished. It drives them crazy if you do that. Um, and they've got about four months to finish the work. We like, let's say, four. Um, it usually takes a little bit longer. But these are jobs that design that you can get in and get out in 35, 45, 55 days. Right. And it's a light. It's, you know, limited as far as the things they can do. What are some of the common repairs you see on the limited? This is what we see a lot. Roofs, gutters, downspouts, painting, siding, a lot of upgrading the plumbing and repair electrical systems, upgrading them to, you know, more capacity. Putting in flooring is always big. People are taking out the, t the carpet mostly and putting in wood. Appliances can, can go freestanding or built in. That's everything down, everything up from the microwave. So you're, I'm sorry, you can't finance your espresso machine. Oh, that, darn. I know. I was bummed when they said that. <laughs> we see a lot of HVAC, a lot of weatherizations happening, and then kitchens. Kitchens are big. Kitchens and baths. Um, that's really common to do on a renovation loan that you can do for as a limited. Right. You can't do any landscaping. So it's only the, the structure of the house. Right. And really, when you look at most of your homes anyway, the kitchen and the bath is usually what needs the most renovation. Flooring, you know, carpet, tile, wood, painting, those are the kind of things that will um, make it more livable. And also for kitchen and baths, a lot of time bring a little bit extra value on what they're looking for. So let's talk about the standard because there's a lot more you can do on that. Standard is, is it's like one of the, I don't know. So I think Fannie Mae is kind of, well, okay, so this would be the Cadillac of renovation lending. It's not the Beamer, it's the Cadillac, all right? Because you can actually tear the house down to the ground and rebuild it as long as you use the 100% of the foundation. It does require 5,000 in repairs minimum. We lend to the county limit or if it's a high balance area and there's no relationship between the purchase price and the cost of repairs as long as it's under the county limit. So they could buy it on the courthouse for $50,000 and need to put $300,000 in it to convert it back to living from whatever it was in and we would lend that amount. Um, there's always an inspection prior to draw disbursements just like on all the other loans. They get five draws. This is sweet if the borrower has no place to live because I bought this $50,000 house and so I have a rent payment and I have a mortgage payment while they fix up my house. I could finance up to six months of my full mortgage payment in, as long as I can afford it and then it's paid out of my escrow. That's just huge. It's huge. This one allows structural repairs. Like I said, you could tear it down. So mold, water damage, hail, wind damage, anything. You can do all that stuff, fire damage, and then they have six months to complete the improvements. And people want to know, like, what if they're not done? Then we incur more administrative costs working with them and reporting back to HUD why they're not done yet. So, and we just keep working with them and helping them get done. Right. So what are some of the standard repairs you see? We have seen a lot of additions this year, um, probably a dozen that I can think of, like major additions. A couple take the roof off, add a second story. A couple take, a, you know, kind of a single family uh, ranch and make it like almost double wide with an upstairs. We've seen a lot of kitchens, big fancy kitchens going in, uh, detached garages, we've seen some of those. Some that were just interior, rearranged the house inside, seen a lot of those um, that, that I know about because we have a special project review committee when we get those big, big additions and I've seen probably one or two a month since last year so people are people are staying in place or they're buying houses planning to be there which right. Is exciting, right which makes sense because you know it used to be five years on average somebody would stay in a home and now we've actually increased that to seven and i think it's going upward and if you're in areas you know in the country where you know you have some of those um brownstone homes or those homes that are closer to each other like in chicago and, and mm -hmm. indiana and and yep. what you you know you're used to saying william this is a great opportunity to go up so yep. to raise that roof, to put a second story on. And as a real estate agent, again, this is an opportunity for you to say, hey, there's options available. You know, you want to increase this? Let's look at this home. So again, going back to that whole HGTV kind of a thing, looking into hey, what do you want to do with this? Let's start dreaming. Let's start thinking about this. And you have another before and after picture. So this obviously is a very ugly kitchen. <laughs> this is a very ugly kitchen. Very dark. So when people ask about what brings value on renovations, the, the, the summarize, you, you, need, you need light and you need livability. That's really what people are looking for, comfortable spaces. You know? And so if you go to the next picture, you can see this guy actually got a kitchen he can work in. Right. right. So yeah. there you go. 
that, so, that just so didn't change away. anything as far as the footprint of the kitchen, but just right. updated it to where it went from this to went to this. And this would be a great one to put on the FHA limited, right? Yeah, this would be a great on the limited because that's all, that's all, most of that could be done for 30 grand. Right. Yeah. So I have a quick question I'm going to throw out there and then we're going to go on to the renovation um, home style. And so the question is, if a borrower has an existing mortgage and their LTV is 50%, can they do this program as a second um, to update a kitchen or bath? No, it would, it's always a first mortgage. So we would refinance them out of their, their existing first mortgage and they would get another mortgage. Um, and so the beauty, if they have that much equity, is they are going to roll in all their closing costs and prepaids. The expense is going to be the cost of the appraisal. That's their out-of-pocket expense. And then they come out probably in a pretty close to the same equity position because they're going to gain some equity through the, the remodeling. All right, perfect. Okay, so we talked about FHA. So now let's talk about a program, which is a Fannie Mae home style mm -hmm. program. So what are the abilities that we have with that? So this is like the BMW or whatever your Audi or Lexus, whatever your preferred luxury car is of renovation lending. It's this Fannie Mae solution, and it also finances the purchase and refi plus the cost of all repairs. This one does one to four units, the second homes, and this is the one that lets you do investment properties. And what's really unique about it compared to FHA is there's not really any limit or restriction on what you can do to the property as long as it's supported by the appraisal and it's on the property. Cool. So let's talk about some of those highlights. Okay. So we use a construction project manager, manager um, construction project inspector, I guess, which we provide. And this person's job, he kind of replaces the HUD consultant, but he's more, more expansive. It's expanded because there's no minimum property requirements. But he's going to do a project review and make sure the project is like can be done. Um, and we'll review the contractor. And then he's on site to do the draw inspections. But like I said, there's no minimum in repairs compared to the 203K, the standard 203K. Your repair is being capped at 75% of the as completed repair value means that virtually anything you want to do can be done. That's really just the way to think about that. Uh, we do inspections again prior to the draw. They get five draws. It also allows them to finance their pavement if they can't, if the house is uninhabitable. And like I said, anything they do just has to be attached to the property, like on the lot. So yeah, you could build an ADU if you're in that part of the country where you have accessory dwelling units um, behind the house. And they have six months to complete their improvements. Very good. Now, you've made some great comparison charts um, between the limited, the standard, and the Fannie Mae. And I know you're not going to go through these, but they are available in the handout, right? Yeah, they're available. And I'm like, we're not going to them because it'll make your, your head hurt. But, um, <laughs> Just, just get them and print them, and then you can keep track of what's more suitable. But your mortgage advisor, whoever you're working with, they're really going to help the borrower get the right loan for them, depending on their LTV, their FICO, their down payment, and, and all that stuff. But right. this is so you have some understanding of what's available, commonly available in the market. Right. And again, it's, it's a matter of just knowing that it's available, which is, is, puts you in that position of being um, an expert. So let's talk about after closing, which is really when the work, spe where be work begins. But you talked about nothing changes for the real estate agent. So they're going to close the loan. They're going to get paid. Yep. And then borrowers can move into the property. If they can't yep. move in the property, they have the option of saying, hey, it's going to take a while to get the work done. We don't have to pay for um, the mortgage payment until the work is done, which is amazing. But now we're closed. What happens? Right. So that's when the work starts. Like, like Ginger said, you guys, realtors you, and loan officers, you get paid at the closing, just like a regular transaction. It takes us a few days to set up the escrow and get the accounting set up, but they can start working as the day after it closes if they want. The borrower's got the keys. He can let the builder in. His money is coming if it's a limited or he's doing a draw for materials. And But they have 30 days to start. So if there's scheduling with the builder, he's got 30 days to work it into a schedule because sometimes we're not exactly sure what day the loan's going to close. And in some markets where the builders are tight, you know, they're scheduling two, three weeks out to start. So they've got 30 days to get started. And then the borrower makes their regular mortgage payments, whether they're living in the house or not. And either they're, we're paying it out of their escrow if they've escrowed any months, or they're just paying it until the work is completed and they can move in the house. But if it's habitable, they can move in right after it closes and be in there while the guys are doing the remodeling, depending on what they're doing. Right. So they have those options available. So, and again, we have another before and after picture. So this looks like a bathroom that needs some TLC. Yeah. So I'm in, I'm in Carmel, Indiana, central Indiana. My brother-in-law actually moved into a house with that bathroom in it. I think the tile was a little different on the floor, 
but that green tile was cemented to the wall (laughs) to get it off the wall. But his bathroom is really nice. I should go over and take a picture of it. I should show him this picture. He'd laugh. Yeah. There you go. Tile to the ceiling, nice shower, contemporary colors, totally different environment. Right. So again, not changing the footprint, nothing major there. In fact, it almost looks like maybe they, you know, took the tile down. I don't know if that's the same um, pedestal sink or not. Um, No, it's a little bit different. A little bit different. Yeah, just a a great opportunity for them to do that and to have it built into the loan. So let's talk about the loan benefits and we'll start out with the homeowner benefits. So it's simpler for the borrower, okay? It's one application. We approve them once for the loan and it's one closing, closes once and they have one monthly payment. So they're not hurrying up to close their loan and then figuring out how to finance the kitchen and then going and doing that, all right? because the loan's based on the after improved value. So we know that after they remodel their kitchen, their house will be worth X and we lent to that amount. There's no credit card debt or reduction of savings, which helps everybody. Um, Lenders like it when people don't take on new debt after their mortgage closes, especially with FHA and Fannie Mae allowing higher LTVs um, or higher debt to income ratios. And you can do repairs that are required or optional. So for the optional, they have to be supported by the appraisal. Fannie doesn't have any required repairs. HUD has their minimum property requirements, which guys, realtors, it's really simple now. If you're trying to figure out if this is going to pass an FHA appraisal, just ask yourself, would it affect my grandmother or a baby? Because if it would, then you need to fix it. So safety and soundness. Safety and soundness. Okay. That's what we're coming down to. And I think with new construction is higher than, than resale. A lot of times you can get the home of your dreams maintain your resale costs and be in the neighborhood you want to be in without having to build a new house. You get a new house in the same place, right? And so for low inventory, you can put it on, you can buy houses on the market, you create your dream home out of it and you get what you wanted without having to either finance or wait for new construction, find the lot, or maybe like big trees. Like I live in a big tree neighborhood and leaves are really, they're, they're an issue, but I'd rather have the leaves and the big trees than not. Right, right. Okay, so let's talk about the realtor benefits. Key for the realtor, I think, um, seller doesn't make any repairs. So when you're looking at a house that they need to list for this, you can propose that they list it for that and allow room for the borrower to buy it and make the repairs. Okay, so we're not asking the seller to fix anything, which in theory would let you show fewer houses because now you have a financing solution. If the borrower is willing to write their offer to fix that, you don't have to show me five houses looking for the perfect house. I could take a house that's 90% of what I said I wanted and customize it and make it be my perfect house. So you can show me homes with good bones that just need reconfiguring. Older homes that need central heat and air or an updated kitchen or appliances. Seller doesn't have to do that. Um, There's foreclosures still in a lot of markets and they're a great bargain, but they almost always have required repairs, right? And target your exhausted listings, primary targets for renovation loans because there's a reason it's been on the market that long and it usually has to do with the house. And key is you get paid at settlement. So it's not any extra work. You get paid at the same time um, and you can get on and do more transactions. Right. So, you know, if you're the kind of realtor that's looking for opportunities and if you go to those exhausted listings that have been on the market for a little while, this is a great way for you to go and pick some of those up and and pick up those listings <clears throat> knowing that there's probably a reason for that and offering a solution so if you're looking for listings this is a great end of the year idea getting into january saying hey i'm going to go and look for those exhausted listings i'm going to call those sellers and i'm going to present them with this as an option and you know when i first started doing training on on two or three k's i had a friend who was a realtor had an house with the ugliest I mean it was ugly and they couldn't sell it and so she said oh I'm gonna have to tell the sellers to fix up the kitchen and this was back when our market was you know not great and so I said don't don't do that I said you know what the two or three K is a great way especially on the limited to be able to do that I said Go to Home Depot, pick up some samples, get some swatches, you know, have an open house and make up a sign, you know, don't like the kitchen, don't worry, you choose. And so she did that. And so, you know, instead of people coming in and looking at that ugly kitchen going, oh my gosh, the kitchen's horrible, not what I'm looking for. Now they stayed in the kitchen 
and they started going through the magazines and they, they started dreaming. Mm -hmm. And really, I think that's what the renovation loan offers. It's that offers that opportunity for dreaming. Right. And so make up a flyer that just says you choose and yeah. put some booklets out, put some pamphlets out and allow people to be part of their own like HGTV show. And guess what? You could be part of it too. And you can create some of these before and after pictures. So here we have a very plain kitchen right plain and dark and they were able to turn it into that and I absolutely love that island there in the middle with the chairs around it because that's exactly what that kitchen needed right here we've got a big open space and now they've been able to utilize that space and make that kitchen absolutely gorgeous so if you are doing these rental loans please 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 take the before and after pictures and integrate that into your marketing so you talked about a lot of information I want to be able to really share with our realtor partners here why use finance of America so the first thing is we know what we're doing um, I personally have been involved in renovation financing for coming on 16 years and in and I've built houses and I've been doing carpentry for a long time my ops team you know we had all our experience of just working just specifically on renovation loans we're about 30 years into it and so we designed designed a process and we fixed we've got staff in the right place we're really focused on service. We want you guys to have a good experience. We want this to work for you and for the customer because then there's more business and also because then people will do them. And we're also a really good mortgage company. So not just for your rental loans, but those of you that have been invited by Finance of America Loan Officers, we have a whole suite of products that can help you sell more houses. Right. And I know that the approach that you use, because oftentimes it's a matter of, hey, I've tried to do this before. It hasn't been great. Right. But one of the advantages of Finance of America is really that common sense approach you use. Right. So really what I just say to people is that most people fail, lenders fail with renovation lending because they don't have enough butts in the seat to get the work done. Right. And the people they have assigned to do the work don't know what they're doing. So our approach is to staff specifically for renovation loans to get them closed in a timely manage manner. And part of that key, and we're going to talk a lot about this, is having a renovation project manager who's responsible for all of the renovation components. So whereas your regular lender might have another way to do this, we think doing this is the right way to do it with dedicated people with the right skill set. And I don't know anybody else that's doing it as focused as we are. You might luck out and hit somebody here and there, but the project manager, they're really responsible for the renovation component of the loan package. They work with the borrower for all the activities that are necessary for successful execution and delivery of a renovation loan experience. Um, we work directly with their salespeople, processing and the consumer to get all the stuff together. So there's a huge amount of communication that goes on, but it's communication by people who are experienced with doing this. We're not the people that see one renovation loan every once in a while. We see all of them, okay? 20, 30, 40, 50 units active in our pipeline any given time. So we're seeing a lot of renovation loans. We see a lot of appraisals. Our underwriters are experienced doing renovation loans. And, and so it's just a process that really works for everybody. That's our goal is it works for me, for you, for the borrower, for the loan officer, for the builder. Everybody should have a, a quality experience. Well, and then somebody that's doing it day in and day out, and you have that one contact person, because really that renovation project manager is the one that's going to take you from beginning all the way to the end, beginning with reviewing the file, right? Yeah, they start right at the beginning. So what another thing is key for you guys to know is that we underwrite your renovation loan at the beginning. So you'll know within a week of having your contract executed, if we have the file, if you have a deal or not, because that's really important because then everybody can sleep a little better. We don't want to wait for 35 days while we put the renovation stuff together and then, and then have the underwriter review it. So, but once it's reviewed, underwritten and reviewed, then the project manager reviews it, makes sure that the project conforms that it's the right you know, type of loan. They have a call with the salespeople to talk to the processor and the loan officer about what's gonna happen next. We talk to the consumer and guide the consumer through getting all the rental specific conditions and documents. Our rental project manager manages all the disclosures. If those of you that are close to the mortgage business know that that's something that has to happen and can be painful, but we do all the redisclosures because we're seeing the whole transaction. And then we submit the loan to closing once the credit package and the rental package are both complete and all the conditions are in hand. So really, you know, in terms of marketing this out, you as a realtor really get to talk about your team 
because working with right. Finance of America, you have not only the loan originator and their team, but you also have the rental project manager and their team as well. So again, positioning yourself, talk about your team, the team that you work at that provides you with that end-to-end -end customer care. Yep. So we manage the process. If we don't sell the bar off to another investor, if they close their loan with us, we're going to... Um, hand them off to the escrow admin group, who's gonna be responsible for shepherding them through getting the work done and paying their contractor, reviewing all their docs. And then we let you know when the renovations are complete, which is the best time to call on them, ask them how it went, get some pictures from them so you can post them to your Facebook page or other media, social media sites, and ask them if there's any referrals, if they, anybody in their circle of friends that they would like you to talk to about a renovation loan, because I guarantee you, even when the job goes rocky, they're happy when it's done. Right. Right. Well, and I think a good idea in doing this, and if you're, you know, setting this up properly and you're taking pictures and videos, video is, is so important. Honestly, people remember 95% of what they see on a video. So think about what you can do to utilize this process into a video. But why not have a reveal party where you say, you know, hey, all your work is done. Let's do a housewarming. Let's do a reveal party. Set up an invitation on Eventbrite. It's a free service you can use. You create it or have your marketing team create it, set it up, pick a date, and you know they just send the link out to their friends. And by doing that, guess what? You end up with a list of all of their friends. So, and then I would recommend go to the reveal party, you know? Yep. Bring some hot dogs, bring a bag of chips, bring some Shasta soda. It doesn't have to be a big deal, but you go and then you know, <laughs> I think what better way to get referrals to actually put yourself right into that situation and be able to have people say, oh my gosh, I'm looking for this. I just think it's an opportunity. And, and really that's what the renovation loan does. It provides you to sell the dream, right? Yep. So that's what you've got to do, guys. We need you to sell the dream, not just home ownership, but it's the dream of the home that they wanted with their finishes. Not just, you know, the house, but really I got to pick. I wanted this kind of hardwood flooring. Because I, I just love white oak, wide panel white oak, right? And I got to have these appliances and this is the palette, color palette. It's my home, right? And I got to do it. it. It is actually strangely satisfying to people for them to be able to design their own living space. <laughs> it's right. It's really powerful. It is. And those are the kind of things that people think about. You know, they wake up in the morning or they lay in bed at night or they go through magazines or they watch the HGTV shows. And, and you do too. I mean, I walk through homes like, ah, I don't really like that. I would do that. It's like we went to the Street of Dreams homes in Oregon this summer. Beautiful homes, brand new, but it's like, I don't like that kitchen. I wouldn't do that. I like the kitchen over over there. That's part of your process and what you do. This allows them to not just dream about that perfect home, but right. to find that home and make it their perfect home. So I think there's no other program out there that is better to do that and to work with the Finance of America loan officer to be able to get that done. So... I'm going to open it up to questions. If you do have questions, we've answered a few already. Um, and also the handout is right there. I will be sending out an email link to everyone with the handout and the recording of this webinar tomorrow. So you can definitely go back and take a look at those. And um, we're going to go to questions now, but I want to remind everyone, if you do have questions, contact the loan originator who invited you here. Um, and they are well-trained. They're certified in this particular um, loan product. William is here to support. His team's there to support. And so make sure you do that. So now we're going to go to questions. Um, and the first question is, can this type of loan be used to buy a property with a manufactured or mobile home on it, remove that unit, and build a site-built home? Uh, no, that would be new construction, unfortunately. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So they can only add to that particular foundation. So if there's an existing foundation with an older home, maybe a farm home that <clears throat> needs some work, they can do that. Right. Yeah. So very good. If you have other questions, let me know. Um, but <clears throat> definitely one of those things where it's not, um, it, it's a matter of actually changing um, what's an existing construction that's there. So manufactured homes are, are not a, a, an available option for that. Okay, great. Well, William, I'm not seeing any other questions in, um, but if you do have questions, please get with your, um, oh, she's a second part of the question. Uh, look like the same part. Okay, I'll ask it. Or when someone has added 
onto a manufactured home, remove the manufactured portion and turn the thing into a site build. And that goes into the same thing. If there's not an existing foundation, you can't do that. Right. So if it was, if they actually poured a foundation for the addition to the manufactured home, um, and it was actually engineered, you know, properly, then they could do that with probably with a home style. Great. Okay. And the question we have is what was a down payment required on the Fannie Mae home? So Fannie Mae has been generous this time around with their new product and it goes to for a first time home, true first time home buyer by Fannie Mae description. I think they haven't been on a note for, for three years, three years. Yeah. Three years. So they'll be 97%. So 3% down. If they're not a first time home buyer on a purchase, a single family unit, they'll be at 95%. That's excellent. Okay, great. Well, good. Well, I'm going to let everyone go. And I want to thank you all for um, attending the webinar today. We do have another webinar coming up um, next week. We're going to talk about how to take this loan program and put it into your marketing, into your plans for next year. And I talk about some goal setting, some of the great things we you know, want to focus on at the end of the year. So um, if you haven't received that invitation already, check with the, your loan originator invited you on the call and hop on that call as well. And William, as always, thank you for your expertise. You, I truly appreciate it. You guys have a great day and we'll see you soon. Thanks, Ginger. Bye-bye.